everybody. Welcome to the Sharon and Joe Show. My name is Sharon. My name is Joe. Every Monday, we get together to discuss narcissism from both a male and a female perspective. As many of you know, we're in a long-distance relationship, so we usually communicate through text, email, and phone. Once a week, we hit the record button and include you in on our conversation so that all of us can share our experience, strength, and hope together. I release videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on all topics related to narcissism. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos. We would really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up. It's a free way you can help us out. And definitely don't forget to leave a comment because we want to know what you have to say. So for today's video, Joe and I are going to talk about drawing a line in the sand, erecting boundaries, and what happens to both us and the narcissist when you do that. Joe has a really cool way of explaining that. So Joe, you want to go ahead and um, tell them what you just told me? Sure. So before we hit the record button, for whatever reason, I was thinking about when I did draw that line in the sand and set up those boundaries. And after a while, when the mask would drop from the narcissist, what I would see is the scared little eight-year-old girl, you know, that had no power. Their, their threats were empty. It just was nothing. It's kind of like a mosquito bite or a gnat. And I thought about that. That's what it's like now. But back then, when I was in, and I'm going to say relationship, even though I hate that word when it comes to narcissists, but I'm just going to say it. So when I was in a relationship, um, the entanglement, is the proper word to say with the narcissist. What I didn't realize at the time, for a long time, that my happiness, my sadness, my joy, my pain, my pleasure, my tears, you know, I was feeding the narcissist. And underneath that smiling face and brown eyes was this demon. And I saw it quite a handful of times in this last 20 years of my marriage, but when that mask dropped, there was pure rage and spite um, that I've never experienced before in my life. So we were talking and we were just like, hey, so basically the only change in the narcissist, if you think about it, is either it's the demon, if you're in the relationship with the feeding the narcissistic supply, or the child that happens when they lose the supply and they're basically going famine mode. I don't know if I explained it the way I did before, Cher, but did I do it okay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That It really just made sense to me the way you were talking about it that way, because that really is what it is. You know, we were feeding this this thing, and it, it turns into a demon. I mean, it, it's, it's evil. When it's getting a lot of supply, when it's getting maximum supply, it can become incredibly powerful. But, yeah, when you stop feeding it, it weakens. I mean, it becomes a scrawny little thing. But the reality for us is that we've grown afraid of this thing, this person, you know, and we don't even realize that we are the one giving it power, but that's what's happening. I mean, this is why we're, we walk on eggshells because we're afraid that we're going to upset it. But the reality is they love us being upset. Any, any emotion they'll eat, they'll eat and become fat, they'll gorge on it. But once you learn to put, draw that line in the sand and stop giving them supply, you will see them weaken. So, Joe, how did you hold the line? Well, it was by the grace of God, you know, um, faith. The last couple of years of the relationship, like I became emotionally detached from her. I didn't realize it, but I did notice, uh, notice a subtle change. I mean, thank God for the umpteenth time, you know, it's just this time it was just, I was ready. And she had crossed the line the way she's done before this time to the point of no return. And I just put my foot down and I drew that line in the sand. It was just like, get out, get out of my life, get out of my life. But the challenges that I've had for the last year and a half, there's many of this. You know, I replaced that relationship with a true relationship, most important one, my God, myself, um, I'm working on codependency and self-worth and like doing a lot of work, being a single parent, but I still saw her, Sharon, as that demon. Um, you know my story, you know the things that have happened, the lying, the cheating, um, the deception, the, I call it brainwashing. They say uh, manipulation and gaslighting, I'm basically brainwashed thinking that I was a bad father, you know, it was just, 
So what happens is after a month of her being gone, she wanted to file for a disillusionment. We had agreed to a set amount. I was going to keep this and this, and she was going to keep this, this, and this. Part of the agreement was I kept the car because she had one. I paid ours off. Well, one night she just decided to steal it. And I called up the police, but they couldn't arrest her because we were still married. Um, the threats of um, having me falsely arrested again. Um, this time it was for some cockamamie story that she gave me. I don't even want to get into it, but more or less, I was terrified of her. I was still walking on eggshells. So what I didn't realize though, is that days had passed and I had gone to little to no contact, Ray Rock to no contact, that she was losing power over me. There was some psychic energy going on, but it was nothing like it was. I was in more danger with her than I was, at least I was at a distance. And what I started doing was, this is about the time back in March when I met you, was, you know, you told me, like, use me. Like, I'm here for you. And um, I had been researching narcissism and antisocial personality disorder for years. And I was aware of it. And I started working on myself long before she, she left. Um, but I would run things by you. Like, you would say, Joe, you know, like, maybe get a restraining order against her so she doesn't steal nothing else from your house. And I was thinking to myself, oh my God, like if I do that, that's gonna throw gas in the fire. And you're seeing her as a weak, feeble little child, you know, the spoiled rotten that's not getting what she wants to throw in a tantrum. I'm seeing her as a demon because of what she's done to me. And I used to tell you all the time, like, listen, this, this thing is capable of anything. But what I started to realize, and I trusted you, Sharon, I, I could go to a psychologist and pay 150 bucks an hour for some knucklehead to tell me what he read out of a book, or I could go to somebody that's walked to walk, talked to talk, been there, done it, lived it, and that person was you, you know, and I would follow your suggestions. I, it was a miracle. I was well enough on my road to recovery to trust another human being and to learn to love again. And, you know, so I would follow your suggestions in spite of my fear, because I knew I wasn't seeing things clearly and slowly and surely she lost that power. That demon became very weak and underneath when the mask would fall would be, I would see it. This is how I would know. She would text me one day. Um, you're, you're, you're the greatest thing that ever happened. You're a great father. You're a great husband. I'm sorry. This and that, I wouldn't respond. Two days later, I hate you. I'm going to try to take half of, half of this. I want half of this. And you have no idea what you're dealing with. This attorney I have and this and that, no response to, um, I'm really sorry that I texted. Like I could see she was just grasping and clawing at anything else she could get. She was losing power. And I saw the desperate little kid inside her. And at the same time, a while back, here's the dangerous part. I start to feel sorry for that little girl. Like, oh my God, this is horrible. Like, I don't want anything bad to happen to her. Well, what happens when you take that little girl and you start to feed her? Well, in the case of a narcissist or antisocial personality disorder, they turn into the demon. So thank God I had you in my corner, coaching me and cheering me on and um, sharing your life with me, you know? And I, I hope I was able to give back it was a quarter of what you given to me. Like, I know for you, it was like walking a fine line. I remember it was like this fine line that you were walking. Why don't you share it with us? Yeah, I'm actually still walking this fine line. Um, some of you who have watched my channel regularly know that right now, while I'm making this video, I am in for the fight of my life. I am trying to escape my ex and there is a real skinny line that I'm walking right now. And Joe, you have helped me tremendously. I mean, you're carrying me through it to a large degree. You're coaching me through every single step of the way. So, you know, Joe's right. You have this narcissist and they're going to be one of two beings. They're either going to be the demon or they're going to be the weak child. You don't want them to become the demon. But the problem is the, the fear, like Joe was talking about when he's seen his ex as the weak child having pity or, or even not just having pity, but thinking that, you know, all right, I'm stronger than, than them now. So I can just do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. 
until the whole thing is over. You can't afford to do that. Now, for me right now, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of my ex. I, I'm, I'm afraid of him because he has the power to mess my life up. He's already messed my life up. I mean, truly. I've been with this person for 20 years. He has brought my family to financial ruin. I mean, I have to start all, I'm in my 40s. I have to start all the way over from scratch because of things that he has done. My kids have been traumatized by him. I'm, you know, I'm running away. I'm, I'm running for my life. Once I'm over the state line, because at that point, you can't do anything to me. If, I, if he, for example, filed for divorce first, I'm stuck where I am for three years. And he's like, right now, he pays half the bills. He won't pay me one thing. I'm, I'm going to be homeless. I mean, I, it, it'll be a disaster. And he will do it because he's mean. I mean, this is how a narcissist is. I'm trying to save my life and my kids' lives. I'm leaving a bunch of stuff and I'm going. I'm trying to get out of here. So Joe, you have helped me tremendously because I'm in I, I ha, right now he's in the little boy stage. But if I feed him incorrectly, if I feed him too much, he'll grow back into the demon. And that's what I live in fear of because, because I'm not out of that state line yet. I'm not past that state line yet. And it can't be until the end of December. The real fear that I have is that he's going to grow big and powerful in the meantime. So there's a very delicate balance of trying to keep him happy enough to stay where he is, but not upsetting him or he'll start growing. And I, I don't know what to do because I have basically no contact with him. Well, little to no contact with him. We don't speak but he does text me. And so when I go to respond to a text, it's, a, it's, I'm terrified. I don't know how to respond to it because my instinct is to be afraid. Is, is I'm afraid of him. He could ruin my life. He could mess me up. He could do this. He could do that. So I want to like be kind to him because that's, I'm like, or if I'm kind to him, he'll, he won't get mad. He'll, he'll be nice. But if I'm too kind, he'll try to take advantage of me and push his way back in. So without you, Joe, I, I, I would be helpless. I wouldn't even know what to do. I, I wouldn't know how to respond to him. You've helped me tremendously. You're able to read him and see him in a way that I can't because you, you understand what's going on. You know the whole situation. You've been through something like this in your own situation and you know what I'm dealing with. So you're able to, to guide me. I mean, there's actually been times where Joe has actually written reply texts for me. So that's really the situation for me. That's what I'm dealing with right now. I think that's incredible too, like the timing of all this. Like neither one of us were looking for any kind of relationship. We're in different states. You got your hands full with the kids. I have my hands full with the kids. We have pets, we have jobs, all this stuff. And the last thing on our mind was that, but my God, when you have somebody in your corner, that has been through it that you can trust because you know you when you when you look in somebody's eyes you hear it in their voice the the genuine like experience that they've had that they, they they truly genuinely want to help you is is an incredible incredible advantage especially if you're like sharon and i where there is a fine line that unfortunately that little to no contact the little contact in between it can make it or break it, you know, um, just thank you for that, Sharon. And, and you've been a wonderful help to me and, and, and I'll forever be grateful for sure. Oh, well, you know, I feel the exact same way about you. Um, so hopefully we can just keep going forward and get to the end of these entanglements and um, not have to worry about it anymore. So Joe, what do you think about a video for next week? Well, remember I was telling you before, I was like, Sharon, we, we should do like a holiday, like, um, I don't know, some kind of a holiday thing because the holidays are coming up. For me, sometimes they're difficult. Um, I get confused. I get sometimes lonely or sad. And you thought about something really that had nothing to do with the holidays, but something that would kind of cheer us up. Um, at least maybe the listeners, maybe not 
quite so much us. You want to go ahead and give it away? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking um, that it might be fun to do a video called Scary But True. So Joe and I can humble ourselves and talk about some ridiculous things that happened in our entanglements and our responses to them. Because today, kind of being on the other side is horrifying to think about the things that we did, but it's also funny. We can laugh at it now. So it might just be like a fun way if, you know, but like you said, for you and I, that might be a little embarrassing, but you are you game for this? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if it's like funny as much as it is like, you know, it, it is in a way comical, like, oh my God, what was I thinking? But, but truly it's just like, but I'll tell you what, after what we've been through, like and we did the tears we did the pain we walked through it i mean I, I, it's okay to laugh you know and here's the thing is like maybe there's some listeners out there that can maybe see see themselves in us and either say to themselves whoa i'm headed in that path too if i don't watch um we can raise the bottom up maybe somebody may say holy crap but joe could do it like i could do it i mean you guys you know here's some really nutty ass stuff and like understand truly what to codependence and low self-worth um coupled with the narcissist can do but i think it, it would be very helpful for people for sure and then it would be cool if they left comments like i said if they wanted to like here's one of their scary but true ones um but yeah i think that's cool maybe like the more we evolve the channel um let your listeners know about the lives we want to do and the coaching for sure too in the future Yes. Yep. Absolutely. In the future, Joe and I are going to, um, we're going to evolve the channel a little bit. We're going to have some lives and some coaching um, will be available as well. Joe can take the guys. I can take the gals. Um, if anyone's interested in that, that's something that we're going to be doing beginning in January. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. We really appreciate it if you do that and definitely comment because we really do want to involve everybody with the channel. So I hope everybody has a wonderful week. Joe will be back with us next Monday and I will see Absolutely. you on Wednesday. Have a great night, everybody. Bye guys.